And we are joined right now by Governor Mike Huckabee, former governor of Arkansas, Republican presidential candidate, of course. And check him out at MikeHuckabee.com. Hello, Governor. Hi, Steve. Great to be with you again. Well, great to talk to you again, sir. I know you're in Iowa. And um, speaking of Iowa, uh, there is a poll out today uh, that shows uh, that uh, Ben Carson has now tied Donald Trump at the top of that poll, each with 23%. Uh, you got Carly Fiorina, 10 percent, and um, it, it, you won Iowa uh, eight years ago. So, and, and last time we spoke, you said it's as important as the NCAA's in March. So how are you going to get up there? Well, the same way we did before, Steve. Uh, at this stage of the game, seven years or eight years ago, you know, we were way back in the pack, barely registering. And so, you know, we... It's all about structure and organization, which we built the largest organization and structure in Iowa. Uh, we've got more county chairs. We've created a deeper structure and organization in the various counties. We're going to all 99 of them. And ultimately, that's how you win Iowa. There are going to be a lot of uh, ups and downs, and I think you're going to see the card shuffle several times between now and February. But uh, we know that what ultimately wins it is – having yourself organized down to the precinct level and that's what we're out doing today and and you know when, when you when you look at iowa and look at the importance of iowa you know and rick santorum won it uh four years ago and i asked rick santorum I, who's also you know trailing uh, in the polls i said uh just last week i said if you don't finish first second or third uh in iowa would that be cause for uh, reconsideration he said yes of course uh, I'll ask you the same thing. Uh, while you're confident you will, uh, you know, uh, surge, uh, if you don't, would that be cause for reconsideration? Well, we're still building great organizations in other early states like South Carolina, Nevada, the southern states, Arkansas, Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, Louisiana. So, you know, we're not a one-trick pony, but clearly we're in Iowa to win. And we hope that we win because it gives us a, a terrific uh, tailwind going into the other contest. But I wouldn't say we would base everything just on Iowa. But again, without any equivocation, we're not just here to be a placeholder. We're here to, uh, to win this state. When you look at, um, when you look at the top three, I mean, see, I mean, Governor, and this isn't a reflection on you in any way, this is just uh, an analysis uh, for me, if you will, uh, about what's going on here. And anybody could see it. Uh, 23, 23, and 10 outsider 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 i mean when you add up the, the 40 to 56 percent of the vote in iowa at this early stage uh is for outsiders what does that say well i think people are understandably ticked off at washington heck so am i i've never lived in washington so i'm as much of an outsider of washington than anybody in fact i probably spent less time there than the three that are uh at the top of this poll but i would also remind people that Voters are angry right now, but they also are smart people. And when, when they start thinking about it, yes, they want someone who is not connected, not obligated. Uh, I'm certainly not the favorite or the, the child of the establishment Republicans. I've railed for years against the Wall Street to Washington axis of power. Uh, but I do think that at some point, while I hear people say, we want someone who will fight, they're going to figure out that nobody has been engaged longer in an effective fight than me, a fight against the Clinton political machine in Arkansas just to get to being elected. And then once they are fighting the corruption that was so prevalent that it resulted in uh, more than 15 people, elected officials, being indicted, carted off to jail. And it's because we fought. I inherited the most democratic political environment in all of America today. That is a solidly Republican state, and a lot of the corruption, because we went after it, uh, went to prison. And so you're, and, you are just as much of a, of a Washington outsider as Trump, Carson, and Carly, correct? I've never had a D.C. zip code. Never <laughs> lived more there than probably three or four nights when I was in a hotel attending a meeting. And uh, never held a job there. You know, I've, I've governed, so I've had the experience that I think a person needs to be president. Right. But I also would just make sure that people understand that if you think I'm a part of that system, then clearly you haven't read some of the editorials that have attacked me because I'm not part of that system. Right. I'm the guy that was fighting for the working class people eight years ago. 
the person who eight years ago was being pilloried by the Wall Street Journal because they said I was a populist. And I'm not sure if they or anybody else knows what that means, but what it means is that I'm sick of the donor class funding the political class and doing it over the backs of the working class. And that's the message that I've been uh, saying for all these many years. Another message that you tweeted out just a little while before we started this interview uh, had to do with a wall on the southern border. And you talked about uh, the fact that the government could build this massive seawall uh, to keep out waves from the ocean uh, with, uh, regarding New Orleans. Uh, why can't we build a wall to keep out waves of illegals? Uh, hashtag no excuses. And you went on to say in another tweet, we can build this wall. Um, why haven't we? Well, we haven't had a president that said we're going to. Nobody's had the will. A couple of illustrations. One, the, the one you just mentioned that we tweeted out this morning, and that is that uh, over the past decade, we built 133 miles of a very significant wall that will withstand a 33-foot storm surge that is designed to handle a Cat 5 hurricane and the force of an ocean uh, during hurricane-level winds and, and, and surges. Now, there's a couple of things about this wall that's very significant. It's the biggest project in the history of the Corps of Engineers. And in many of the gates that can lift up to let water through, it can allow enough water to fill an Olympic-sized pool in four seconds. But what really is significant, there's more concrete in one barrier in that wall than in the entire Hoover Dam more steel than exists in eight times over the Eiffel Tower. Now, my point is that if you can build a wall that can hold out against the waves of a storm surge and a Cat 5 hurricane, please don't tell me that this country could not uh, create a security that would result in being able to keep out waves of illegal people crossing our border. No, sounds good. All right, Governor, we're coming back. Uh, we got a lot more to talk about with Governor Mike Huckabee. And again, check him out at MikeHuckabee.com. And uh, we'll continue right here on the Steve Malsberg Show. Don't go away.